yorumlarını izleyeceğiz. Ben e, daha fazla sözü uzatmadan hemen kendisini davet etmek istiyorum. Pilkington Profilet uygulama teknolojisi yöneticisi Wolfgang Düt Profilet için uygulama alanları ve yenilikler başlıklı sunumunu yapmak üzere aramızda. Kendisini sahneye davet ediyorum. Wolfgang Yeah, thank you very much for the introduction. I would like to give you a short overview over the Pilking Profilit product range and the application possibilities as well as over the latest product and application developments. This is the factory where we are producing the channel shaped glass now since almost 50 years. And since then, the team is fully dedicated to the production, sales, and distribution of channel glass. So we are doing nothing else since then. And the factory is located in the very southwest of Germany, very close to the Luxembourg and French border. And from here, we are bringing the goods to many different markets, 30, 35 different markets all over the world, but mainly within Europe. And to Turkey, we are usually going uh, via truck over the landway, and then bring full truckloads down to Istanbul and Turkey. This describes quite well how we are doing our business. So we are producing in our factory the channel-shaped glass, but since these products cannot be installed in a standard curtain wall system or into a window frame, we need to offer also the corresponding system components, which can then be assembled together with the glass at the construction site to such a what we call double glazed system. All in all, we are producing nine different glass profile types. Five of them with a glass thickness of six millimeters and a flange height of 41 millimeters. And the lower four with a flange height of 60 millimeters and a glass thickness of seven millimeters. And these nine basic types can then be combined with different functions and designs. Like, for example, uh, online coatings, so pyrolytic hard coatings, which we apply onto the hot glass so that the uh, coating gets burned into the glass surface. Uh, we can put wire inlays into the glass and we can combine it with certain characteristics for sound insulation and safety. In addition, we can combine the different glass profiles with various designs like colors, patterns, different glass colors, etc. That leads us then to the delivery program. We have on the top the nine basic glass profiles and then here on the left the different functions and designs and that gives us then the availability of all the different glass combinations maybe not so easy to understand it at first sight. Um, as we are having two different glass series, the six millimeter and the seven millimeter glass, we also need to offer two different framing component series. One for the 41 flange millimeter classes, we have frames with a depth of 60 millimeters, and for the 60 millimeter flange glasses, we have a framing system with 83 millimeters depth. And both of them can then be supplied again in full aluminum or in thermally broken version. Here we have an overview over the different glass designs. So we have on the left here the different patterns and textures which we can apply onto the glass. The glass is a rolled product, not like a float glass, so it comes as hot glass out of the furnace, gets the pattern by a roller, and then is brought into this U-shape before it's cooled down. So we can apply different textures. All these textures can then be combined with the Pilkington Opal design, which is a special sandblasting. Or we can put in wire inlays into the glass, we can have low iron glass, which is less green than the standard color tone, and we have here the online coatings which you can apply, like the Profilit Amethyst, which is a blue color coating, the Antisol coating, which is a solar control coating, and the plus 1.7 coating, which is a low E coating. 
to give you an impression uh, on the different appearances of the textures, we have made here a short simulation of the different textures, like for example the slimline compared to the profilate macro texture. We have a clear version which provides more transparency and as well we have the profilate wave with the wavy shaped surface. The glass is usually installed at site, so not pre-assembled at a factory, and we bring to the site the framing components and the glass, and the installer first installs the enclosing frame, and then puts in the glass by lifting it, by lifting it into the top frame and settle it down into the lower frame. And that's, that can then be uh, given as single glazed or as double glazed application. Regarding the installation length, due to the U-shape of the glass, it has a certain self-stability and it can provide long installation lengths. And the installation length depends on the one hand on the glass type that is used. And there the 7 mm glass types with the 60 mm flanges provide longer installation lengths. And on the other hand, it depends on the applicable design wind load onto the facade. As an example, if we have a design wind load of 0.6 kN per square meter, means 600 Pascal or roughly 600 kilogram per square me uh, 60 kg per square meter, we can install the K2567 double glazed up to a glass length of 5.15 meters. The maximum achievable length is around 6 meters with this product and these lengths can be further increased by using, for example, thermally toughened glass. Where are the products used? We are distinguishing between three main segments. The first one is what we call standard glazing. That is the traditional market and the traditional application for these products. So we're coming out of the industrial and commercial buildings, sports halls, staircases, and vertical roof glazing. But since 15 to 20 years, more and more applications are going into more architectural design of facades, where warm facades or ventilated cold facades are built with channel glass. And then we have a rather small portion of interior applications as partition walls or for shop design, for example. Just to give you some examples of the different application possibilities, for example, for the standard glazing, we have here an industrial building. Um, in South Korea, in Seoul, of company POSCO. POSCO is one of the biggest steel manufacturing and processing companies in South Korea. And they have built a new research and development center and the whole facades of the of two blocks of this building complex have been made using Pilking Profilit with several levels of channel glass, one on top of each other. Another one also in Korea at the Incheon Airport in Seoul, the new uh, hangar of the airline Asiana. And uh, here the challenge was that we had to face very high wind loads up to uh, 6,500 Pascal. And the glass had first to be proven in wind channel tests that it can withstand the high wind loads. Another one in Denmark, a power plant with two blocks of a waste burning power plant. The two blocks, all in all, sum up to roughly 25,000 square meter of glass, which we have delivered there. And the whole facades of the blocks have been enwrapped with the profilite. Another one, also industrial, but more from an architectural design, is the new plant of Eberspecher. Eberspecher is a manufacturer of automotive parts for different car manufacturers, and they have built a new factory at uh, Dresden in the uh, east of Germany. And uh, the shape of the building looks like a wheel of a car, and they have used the channel glass in different applications like corridors, but also the main building and the factory buildings are using different types and designs of channel glass there. Another traditional application is in sports halls. We have tested since many years 
uh, and testing it again and again. The ball impact safety of the channel glass, that means it is proven that the glass can withstand standard ball impacts uh, like they can happen when playing volleyball, basketball, uh, football, the European football um, uh, or handball games in the inside the, the sports hall and we have here a sports hall in Belfort in France and the special thing here is that the upper part of the glazing is six and a half meter high and they had to use additional wind anchors at a certain height to hold the glass against the wind suction in addition. Also a traditional application are staircases um, where, for example, like here, in straight or in curved glazing, the staircase can be covered with profilite. Um, and uh, the special thing is that with the channel glass, you can do in a very economic way curved glazings because you don't need to bend the glass itself, but you can achieve the bending by um, putting one piece of glass next to the other and make then some kind of segment glazing which gives then a round shape at the end of the day. Also interesting uh, subway stations at uh, Peru in Lima where people are going down to the subway and they are illuminated at night and give a very uh, pleasant and, and nice look during the night but also during the day when the people go in it's not getting directly dark but some tr uh, natural daylight is coming into the building. Parking garages also often choose channel glass because on the one hand it can help to bring natural daylight into the building and give people a better feeling when going into the parking garage and on the other hand it can help to have some natural ventilation through the parking garage to get out the exhaust gases so you don't need any additional ventilation system and have the natural ventilation by the glass itself like here for the River North Self Park in Chicago where they have used approximately 3000 square meter of fully tempered profilite tea. Apart from the traditional market we have the facades some examples of them as well. We have here the University of Iowa, designed by Stephen Hall in New York, and it's the library of the university, and the profit helps to get a lot of natural diffuse daylight into the building, and in addition they have the transparency by integrating normal window elements into the facade. Also a nice one, the new BMW plant at Leipzig, designed by Zaha Hadid Architects in London, also with a combination of translucent areas with channel glass and transparent areas which use normal IGU applications. One in the Far East, in Beijing, at the Wukesong Road, uh, the Wukesong Complex, also a combination of channel glass with a sandblasting on it and window uh, elements that are integrated into the facade. This one is more some kind of weather protection and sound insulation. It's some kind of uh, social residential building um, and it's along a main road, a ring road which goes around Munich and uh, people who live in these flats want to go to their flat without getting uh, the noise from the streets and therefore the, the corridors to the flats have been covered with profilite in order to reduce the sound impact of the road. The glass can also be installed in a vertical application, not only horizontally, and there you can make the horizontal glazing more or less as high as you want, as the glass panels are not lowered one on top of each other, but every glass panel is lowered on the left and on the right in the side frame on a support angle. That means uh, the panel above does not put any pressure on the panel below and therefore you don't need any horizontal beams in between. You can make it 20, 30, 40, 50 meters high. Also an interesting application is this uh, school at Bochum 
NGB and here the special thing is not so much the glass uh, the glass only covers the wall behind and the wall behind is some metal application and the special thing is that every piece of metal has a different printing and so over the facade it gives uh, a changing and dynamic view of the facade and if you are far enough away you can even read different words and letters from the distance on the on the metal cladding Another one, the Biomedical Research Center at Rostock, also a cold facade where the profilet is only used to cover the wall behind, the concrete wall behind. The light into the building is coming via a normal curtain wall system. And here also a very nice example that you can make very easily and economic the curved glazings. Also a special application where you maybe at first sight do not think that channel glass is used is the new control tower at the airport in Hanoi. It's a concrete shaft which is 80 meters high and has a diameter of 10 meters and the complete concrete shaft is covered with profilite in a double glazed application just as a cladding to protect the concrete behind. And at night it's a little bit illuminated and it looks quite nice. One from Turkey, uh, just finished the Piri Reis University here near Istanbul. Uh, there we have supplied roughly uh, 4,000 square meter of K2567 micro, fully tempered with low E coating on the inside. Another one from Istanbul, the Terras Ferry building with some uh, sandblasting and illumination what gives a nice view during the day but especially also at night when it's backlit. Yeah, some few examples about interior application. Like here, the Moscow Film School at Moscow where they have covered some desks but also interior partition walls with profilet. Or here in Switzerland, an office with a, with a kitchen inside the office. And the special thing here is that every piece of glass has a different inclination. And so it gives some kind of yeah, changing inclination of the wall, a dynamic wall. Um, but a special application and also special installation technique. Another one at Warsaw in Poland as a horizontal application, um, the new uh, headquarter of the Polish Airlines lot in Warsaw, or here uh, the Zabanci University in Istanbul, where two staircases inside the building have been covered with profilet inside. And the last one for the interior is the new Tom Bradley terminal at LAX Airport in Los Angeles. Here we have uh, interior glazings with quite high glass lengths of up to five meters. The glass is fully tempered for safety reasons. And in addition, they have some LED backlight system behind, which can change uh, the different colors of the illumination. Yeah, some theory. Um, of course, architects are mostly interested in physical values like the U-value, G-value, and the light transmission, which we can provide for different class combinations. Um, the U-value with the low E coating can be reduced to 1.8, but we have also the possibility to further reduce U-values. So this here on the top are the standard applications, single glazed, double glazed, double glazed with low E, down to 1.8. Or we have the possibility to go into a triple shell glazing where we come down to 1.2 watt per square meter Kelvin or double shell with a translucent insulation material inside the glazing where we come down to 1.1 to 1.4 depending on the type of material used. And we have a special setup with a double shell and double layer of translucent insulation material where we can even achieve 0.85 watt per square meter Kelvin as U value. Um, as an example, for such translucent insulation materials, we have here a sports hall at Berlin. And the translucent insulation material has here two purposes. One is to bring down the U-value to save some energy. And the second one is quite important for sports halls to reduce the blending effects. 
and the translucent insulation material helps to get the light even more diffused into the building. Another one with such installation materials is the office building of the company Beru at Preppen near Karlsruhe in Germany. And you see that you still have some translucency and get also still a lot of light into the building, although you have a material in between the glass shells. And you can have the transparency by integrating window elements inside. Another one at Washington DC, Smithsonian Genetics Labs. This is an energetic renovation, so it was an old building which has been renovated uh, and you achieve a U value of 1.1, also by integrating translucent insulation material inside. Solar control is also an issue in many markets and there we have different possibilities, like for example here at the Palazzo Aurelia in Tortona in Italy. Um, there they have used uh, our solar control coating antisol as outer shell, the low E coating plus 1.7 as inner shell. In addition, they have inclined the walls approximately 10 degrees to the outside in order to reduce the um, radiation of the sun and have on the top of each glazing still some shading equipment also to reduce the sun radiation. Regarding noise control, channel glass can provide very good values as it's a quite massive construction. In a double glazing, we can achieve between 41 and 42 decibel as uh, RW value for the sound reduction. And in a triple glazing with gaskets, we can even achieve up to 57 decibel of sound reduction, which is quite a good value. An example for such a triple glazing is a, a biomass power plant near Munich, which is quite close to a residential area, and uh, uh, people who live there did not want to get disturbed by the generators inside the, this small power plant, and that's why they choose this triple glazing with this high insulation value for the noise control. We have tested the system also regarding the so-called A values, that means regarding air permeability, water entry, and structural resistance against wind um, at the yeah, probably most well-known test laboratory we have in Germany, that is IFT Rosenheim. And we have tested uh, a complete facade element up to almost four meter height. Um, and hopla and have achieved the maximum possible values regarding weather tightness, that means against um, air entrance, water entrance, and structural stability. We have done similar, similar tests also in the United States according to ASTM standards, or for example in the UK according to CWCT standards. If safety, Characteristics are required. Usually, thermally toughened glass is chosen, which provides a special or characteristic fragmentation of a tempered glass. If people or somebody falls into the glass, that it breaks safely. And then we take the normal product and push it through an additional thermal process. That means we heat up the glass again up to around 690 degrees and then cool it down quite quickly to get an internal stress situation in the glass. And this stress situation causes that if you hit the glass with a pointed uh, hammer, for example, that the glass breaks into the small fragments. In addition, we can do a heat soak test in order to reduce the risk of spontaneous breakage in case of any nickel sulfide inclusions in the glass that can occur. Yeah, some new product and application developments which we have introduced over the last two, three years since we had here our last meeting. Um, which is the Pilking Profilit Opal sandblasted product and custom-made Opal, a new uh, decorative pattern called E1. We have introduced the low iron class products, which are less green, like the, the OptiWhite, and we have introduced the Pilking Profilit Hurricane LT. Regarding the Opal, it's an additional process which we are doing in-house. That means we take the glass and 
sandblasted on the inner surface of the U profile and we have defined this process uh, in a way that the sandblasting does not affect the structural stability of the glass. That means the installation lengths for the sandblasted glass are the same as for a normal standard or not sandblasted glass. And applications are, for example, like here at the conference center at Kirchberg in Luxembourg. It's an office building with several stores, and the corridors in the stores are cladded with the glass. So the glass is not used to get light into the building. They just covered the wall that they do not need to paint it. And they have uh, covered the wall with this glass, with the sandblasting behind, in order to have not a direct view onto the wall. And in addition, have put on some LED lights on the top and on the bottom, and it gives a very nice and friendly appearance during the day. Another one also using this Opal design is a renovation of uh, the Sachs Hotel at Kaiserslautern where the profilite is used as a facade in front of the facade. The distance between the, the original facade and the, the profilite is around 80 centimeters to one meter. Or here in uh, Paris, um, an apartment uh, house uh, where the corridors to the flats are partly cladded with uh, the profilite and the opal design. The custom-made opal, which we are offering since half a year now, is that we can, if requested, sandblast onto the glass and then on several pieces of glass, different icons or letters or your logo or whatever you want to have on the facade. and. Uh, we can then make it over a certain length of 10 or 15, 20 meters. Over many pieces of glass, we can create such pictures or icons, for example. That has also been done here at the parking at the train station at Nivelle. It's a concrete uh, parking garage, and the architect wanted to clad the concrete structure with glass. Uh, and the glass has been sandblasted, but in some areas, and these areas were exactly defined by the architect, he wanted to have a clear view through the glass that you see the concrete behind, or maybe can look into the parking garage, and we have provided all glass panels with a defined uh, design of the, of the sandblasting. Picking profilite decor E1 is also something we are offering quite new since half a year. It's a new texture on the inside of the glass and it gives some kind of appearance of icicles on a glass. Um, a very traditional design which is available for many, many years on other glass types but has not been available so far on channel glass. Picking profilite OptiWhite, OW, like we call it, low iron glass is often chosen uh, by architects if they do not want to have this greenish appearance of the glass. Not so much because of the, of the physical values, which are of course the same as for normal low iron optivite glass, but it's more uh, yeah, a design aspect. Like for example here, the new Radisson Hotel at Chongqing. It's a central city in, in China, and there the lobby area is using around 2,000 square meter double shell of K2567, tempered and heat soaked in low iron quality. Another one, the German Aerospace Center at Berlin, also with low iron glass and translucent insulation material inside, which gives an additional effect on the white appearance of the glass, and uh, there they used approximately 3,500 square meters of that product. Or like here, the U.S. Federal Courthouse at San Diego in the United States, in the uh, basement area, also low iron glass is used because they wanted to have this white appearance. A really nice one is the new town hall at uh, the city of Rochdale in the United Kingdom. Um, there we have many different applications for the product, uh, some of them uh, on the outside building where we have real, let's say, facade applications where the glass is 
the wall itself, but we have also some lamella and louver applications where glass is more used as a decorative element. And in the basement, we have even uh, a special application where the glasses have been drilled and fixed with a bolt fixing uh, at the bottom because it's only clamped at the top and the bottom is more or less freestanding. On the inside of the building, they are using the same product uh, in different applications, like here corridors or here the balustrades are covered with it. Another one in UK also with low iron glass, Wigan Youth Zone, with uh, translucent areas using translucent insulation material and clear glass areas where profilite low iron clear has been used to have a rather transparent view inside and outside the building. Another product we are offering in the United States is Profilit Hurricane LT, um, which is used on the east-south coast of the United States where hurricane resistance is an issue. In the United States, we have two different uh, requirements regarding hurricane resistance. One is the large missile impact that was shown by Chris before. For this, we also have a product um, we can offer in the United States with a laminate on the profilite. But for the small missile impact, which is required from a certain height of the building, where you do not expect any cows or pickup trucks flying around, but rather small particles, they um, used a small missile impact uh, where they shot with small uh, projectiles onto the glass and the glass needs to resist. And there we have an, uh, tested successfully a product, Profilit HSTR, what means heat strengthened, with an uh, additional safety film applied to the inside of the glass. And one of the first applications for that product was the SCAT Museum, Savannah College of Art and Design in Savannah, um, as a horizontal glazing of this tower. The tower itself has no real function, it's more uh, a yeah, representative uh, part of the building and it's illuminated at night. Then we have the possibility to drill holes into the glass and temper them, like for example here at a Mulberry shop in Singapore. Mulberry is a design shop chain and they have built several shops uh, around the world. One is in Singapore and they have fixed their logo and their letters through the profilite to the uh, back structure of the building and we have drilled the holes inside the glass and tempered the glass that they could uh, put the bolts to fix the, the logo through the glass. Our factory is certified according to uh, different ISO standards for sure, like the ISO 9001 or ISO 14001 standard for the quality management system and environmental management system. And uh, soon we are going to publish also an environmental product declaration for the product, uh, which is quite important in case you want to certify your building uh, according to any national or international certification standard like uh, LEED from the US or PREEM uh, in the UK. In Germany we have DGNB, in France there is ASHQE. There are many different certification standards regarding sustainability and green building and such an EPD can help to uh, do such a certification because usually then every building material used in the building needs to be declared regarding the requirements. Yeah, just to, to sum up the advantages, most of them have been mentioned already in, uh, during the presentation, that's why I want to make it short. We can have large spans with the channel glass due to the U-shape of the glass. Um, it's quite easy to install the products as the complete system is installed at the construction site. We can have an easy and economic realization of craft glazings. Um, we are offering a complete system, that means not only the glass, but also the system components. We can supply safety characteristics, for example, with the thermally toughened glass, and we have various design options. In addition, our, full, our team is fully dedicated to this product line. We have an, uh, 
technical advisory team, engineers and architects offering support, 50 years of experience in the production and sales of this product, and um, we can offer architecturally interesting and economic solutions for facades and interior construction. To end up, some examples with... Uh, Il okay, no? Yeah, yes. <laughs> Um, just to, to close uh, the presentation, I want to show you some examples where illumination systems have been in integrated into the system or combined with the system. One is a passage <coughs> at a station at Geldern where LED lights have been used inside the glass that can create some kind of uh, light effects inside. <coughs> Another one is a museum at Sindelfingen in Germany where they have used neon lights behind the glass. The glass is covering a concrete wall and the neon lights are installed between the glass and the concrete wall. Also a nice one, the Shanghai Glass Museum. <coughs> that was an, a building of an old bottle um, manufacturing uh, company and it has been switched to a glass museum. And the profilage, you probably cannot recognize it directly, <coughs> is the black part here. So the glass panels are installed horizontally, covered with a black paint, and then some letters are cut out of the paint and backlit by some uh, illumination behind. And all the letters have something to do with glass production and uh, glass technology. And the last picture, also a nice one, the Hollywood Casino in Columbus, Ohio. That was an old car factory that has been closed and has been switched into a casino. And um, the entrance area with these uh, pillars um, has been using the Pilking Profilet Wave with the wavy shaped surface in low iron quality, fully tempered and in addition with a metallic gold color, translucent metallic gold color, because they have put some light behind the glass to illuminate the building. And then the inside of the building, they also covered different columns and, and piers with the type of glass. So with that picture, I want to end up. Uh, hope you had some interesting aspects inside. And if you have any question, please feel free to ask. Thank you. the panels on horizontal basis. To walk on it or as a roof plating? Well, you mean? may walk or you may not yeah. walk like yeah. this. Mm -hmm. um, in overhead applications, uh, nowadays, most time laminated glass is required. And the profilet has a certain stability due to the U-shape, but it's not, yeah, it's not a safety glass in this aspect. That means if the glass breaks for any reason and people could walk below or could walk on it, they could get injured. And that's why we usually not recommend to use the, the glass in such applications. Recommend it or is it not done? It is. Today it's not done. In the, in the earlier days we had uh, quite a number of applications, for example in shed glazings, inclined sheds, or also horizontal garages, for example, have been covered with, with profilet. Usually then in a wired version with wire inlays inside, that if the glass breaks, that it does not break. But in most countries nowadays it's not allowed and therefore it's also not done. And we do not recommend it anymore. Although it's Georgian wired. Although it's wi wired, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Do you send the uh, fully tempered glasses cut to size or do we make the term fully tempering? Um, I did not understand it right, but if I got it correct, you asked to, uh, the, regarding the tempering, it first, first needs to be cut to size and then we temper it and then bring it to the side because after tempering you cannot, cannot cut it again. You do it or the glass processor do it? We do the cutting. Yeah. Then you send, no, the fully tempering. The fully tempered we are sending. For example, like here. Um, this project was calling for tempered glass with longitudinal cuts that the, the glass can be jointed at the corners. And we got the dimensions to do the cuts. 
and then supplied the cut to size and fully tempered product to the United States. Okay, then a standard tempering furnace can do the tempering of this glass? No, it's a, a special tempering furnace that we have developed with the producer of the tempering furnace because you need to follow the U-shape of the glass for heating up, but more important for cooling down. Because otherwise, maybe you have success in getting the glass through. It will not break in the tempering furnace, but you will not get the correct fragmentation. When you mentioned about uh, U values, mm -hmm. uh, we saw that chart. Uh, yeah. how, how do you define the U values? Uh, do, you, do you use a CFT program or is it a theoretical value? The, the U value uh, is achieved either by a low E coating, which we apply onto the hot glass during the production. So it's a pyrolytic metallic metal oxide a hard coating, which is scratch proof, connected to the surface of the glass, or we put in some translucent insulation material inside the glass, which is something like, yeah, like a rock wool, but translucent. The light can go through. And there are different products available. We do not supply these products, but there are different suppliers of such products, and they cut it to the right size and bring it to the installer, and they install it into the glass then. And also, uh, sorry. And also, uh, you, I am sure you know uh, that the, uh, about the uh, horizontal application and vertical applications. Uh, there is a big difference. You values about the vertical and horizontal application. From horizontal to to vertical application is the same because you have no additional metal or something in between and the installation sequence is also the same. So if you install it vertically, you have, for example, two pieces of glass and then these packages one next to the other. And if you do it horizontally, it's the same way, but just 90 degrees turned around. So the U, the U values are then also the same and also the light transmission and the G value. Did not find the, the slide with the U values here. Any more question? Hello. Uh, are you using the finite element solutions on defining uh, strand properties or such as uh, heat transfer properties of the glass? So I, sorry, I did not did not understand. Are you using the finite element solutions on defining? Uh, the strand properties of heat transfer properties of glass, finite element solutions. So, sorry, I, I did not get your point. What what are we using? What finite are? element methods. Finite. Ah, fine. ah yes. no, no. Um, yeah, both. When when we do the drilling into the glass, you only can determine the stresses with a finite element method. But if we calculate uh, the installation lengths uh, for a normal application, single span girder, for example, or a, a, a two span girder with some wind anchors in the middle, we do that more or less by, by hand or with a simple program, because then it's quite easy to calculate the stresses resulting from the wind load, from the design wind load, and compare it to the stresses uh, which are allowable for the, for the glass profiles. That's an easy calculation. Uh, therefore, we usually do not need uh, to have F EM models. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much.